Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy. Thanks for tuning in today. Now, recently I fixed the power steering problem on the truck and it turned out to be a bad power steering pump. But if you're curious like me, you kind of want to know what went wrong inside that pump. In today's video, I'm going to disassemble this pump and see if I can figure out what went wrong with it. Stick around, find out what the guts of a Saginaw power steering pump look like. The pressure valve and everything have already been removed. I covered that in detail in the other video. I've never taken one of these apart, but looking at this, this is obviously a shell. And then it almost looks like the pump will just come out the front here. So there's two fasteners, this one and this one. I think if I remove them, maybe we'll make some progress. I'm assuming there's a giant O-ring that I'm working against here. I wonder if there's a special tool for this. That did it. Just had to hold my tongue right. Anyway, comes out like that. Reservoir. This is my guy right here. O-rings all look good in there. It looks like a snap ring in here. Magnet up in the top here. Some goo on it. This is where the pressure valve goes in. I see this small hole here right there and I think I can pop that snap ring out and see that in there. That's what I'm trying to do. Just get this cover off so I can pull that out of there. This is just the punch. See it got in underneath there like that. Synthetic power, power steering fluid is very slippery. In case you weren't aware. So, little spring sitting in there like that. That's what we got at the moment. comes the pump assembly. There's this piece, which is the back of the pump. This is the heart and soul of the pump. It's a vein style pump. As it rotates, you can see how those veins, the ones that aren't touching the inside of the wall over there will under centripetal force. Like they'll go out like that on the inside there, if you can see that. Take it out the rest of the way. Here's the inside of the housing. Not really much to speak of. But this is the heart of the pump right here. Let's look at the inside of this. So this comes off. Looking for any kind of damage in here. Something that might indicate what went wrong. There's a smooth side to these, and there's a flat side. You can feel it more than see it. You might be able to see it in the frame, but you might be able to see it on a profile there. But those move against the inside of this and create a volume of fluid. The pressure is actually created by the pressure valve and this spring, and actually the spring that's inside of here. So I consulted with the service manual to see what it said, if there was some kind of measurement or something that could be made on these parts to determine if the pump is bad. All it really says is if there's excessive wear, then replace the entire assembly, the veins, this piece, everything that's in there. Now, as far as what would be considered excessive, I know this pump was bad because it wasn't able to produce the volume that it needed to, but I can actually catch these grooves here with my fingernail and I would say that's a pretty good test. So if you can catch it with your fingernail, 
that's excessive, especially in a pump assembly like this. This is supposed to be a finely machined surface. It's a sealing surface. Any abnormalities like this, well, that says the pump is bad. So we can condemn it right here, apparently. The fix, replace the entire assembly. You can see how that same scoring carries over to the inside of the pump. So the veins and everything appear to be okay, but the sealing surface between here and that outer plate that I just showed you, that's what says that this pump is bad. And I knew it was bad because I checked the pressure, but this is physically what you might find if you open one of these up, if you suspect a bad pump. Now, as stated, I covered the uh, valve parts in a previous video, but uh, the spring goes in first. Uh, the valve would go in next, and this can come apart also. You take off this top nut. I'll do that for you real quick. I don't want to damage this surface at all. So I'm going to hold it with a rag and just use an impact. This has worked for me before. I'm using an 11 millimeter for this. I've had this part already once. So inside of here, that screen on the top, a washer, got a check ball and then a spring and a, well, a valve seat and then a spring that that seat sits in. So that's everything that's inside the valve. And these can be changed out depending upon the application of the pump. So you can have, you know, well, the same pump, but a different valve for different applications. For instance, I put a restrictor in here so that I could run the Saginaw pump on my Ford system. Anyway, um, this spring goes into the valve and this seat for the check ball sits in that spring. Then the check ball sits in the top like that. And everything goes down inside of the valve like so. Then you can sort of see like a little seat in this as well for that check valve. And these screw together. And that's what's inside that valve. And when you go to reassemble, there's those two pins that you can see down inside there. They need to go into, I believe, these holes. Yeah, either way, everything needs to line up correctly. There, see how those slide, slid down on those uh, pegs there? that goes in like that, it just sort of dropped in. The smaller holes, not the bigger ones. Spring. I wager there's a special tool for this. I know just the thing. Something about a monkey and a football comes to mind. This seems to be the best method, at least for me, is these two clamps. I've got everything seated down past this groove, and I want to make sure that I don't put the gap in this area. I want to be slightly offset so that when I put a punch in here, it can knock this out, and it's one end of it. So in other words, I don't want it back here that I'm knocking out. I want it up here, like this. If you are reassembling at this point, there are two O-rings here and here. Make sure those are intact. And maybe even sticking up a little bit. They seal against the back of the case. So they need to like maybe, well, stick up just a little bit so that they can create that seal. Um, but from everything I've seen going in here, is this worth going in and trying to replace these parts? I don't know. I don't know if these parts are available. I don't know how expensive they are, but Pretty much everything inside of here needs to be replaced. In my view, might as well get a new pump, but at least now you know what's inside of it. I'm using these old fasteners as a guide to make sure that this gets orientated correctly when it goes back together. 
something to certainly be mindful of. I'm trying to avoid hitting the shaft and I'm just hitting the body of the pump. A press might work even better for this. And I also made sure that I lubricated the O-ring. Seems once you get past a certain point, it goes together and comes apart fairly easily. Make sure that these can go out in and out well and also that you have the ability to insert the valve. I'm not putting this in permanently yet, but I'm gonna make sure it threads in. Just trying to make sure that it's not moved to one side or the other and things won't go together properly. This is a hand tighten feature on this. I don't have a torque spec. Spring, valve, I'll call it the retainer. Now you've seen inside a Saginaw power steering pump. I feel special. How about you? Now in the video where I was diagnosing and showing this problem on dad's truck, I showed that the uh, pulley to the power steering pump was actually out of round. And I believe that to be the root cause of this problem. I didn't get one from March performance, but Summit hooked me up with a new pulley for the power steering pump. It hasn't arrived yet. It's still shipping out, but just know that I am getting a new pulley for that power steering pump. And hopefully that will prevent future failures. Thanks, Summit. I think if you're in this situation, you're gonna warranty the pump anyway. I was just curious to see what was inside of it. Those pumps are very tight tolerance. And if the tolerance gets out of spec, they start to leak out internally and they won't be able to produce the volume that they need to. And FYI, pumps like this produce volume. They don't produce pressure. The way you get pressure is that whole pressure valve setup that goes into the back with the springs and all that. That actually creates the pressure in the system. The pump is only creating volume and moving fluid. And that's the way hydraulic pumps are. They don't really create pressure. They just create a volume. But if they're not a, able to create a sufficient volume, like what was happening on my truck, then you get a loss of pressure as a result. So you need a, a steady volume of fluid going towards that pressure valve in order to maintain that pressure. If you don't have it, well, you get what we have here, a power steering pump that does not work. If nothing else, I hope looking at the inside of a Saginaw pump was fun. I, I thought it was fun. Now you know how they come apart. If you're sending one back for warranty, I don't advise that you do this. Let, let them handle it. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching today. I'll put links in the description to additional information, including that video about the power steering on the truck. If you want to check that out, if you have automotive questions, I ask that you head to ericthecarguy.com, also linked in the description. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> really appreciate it when you do that stuff. Thanks so much for watching today, and I'll see you next time.